Welcome again. In this video, we will discuss the sampling techniques. Sampling is one of the topics that many people may find it uh, challenging. However, sampling is consisting of a few uh, or let's say some of the key points. I will try in this video to discuss all these points to break any problem or eliminate any problem could be related to understanding what is sampling so the main reason or the first thing that we need to know about sampling is assembling is an option for assessors to only select part of the components or part of the elements to conduct a test on it this phrase is quoted from the pci standard and sampling is simply selecting smaller subs subset for from a whole group of population to save time and money how it could save time and money by limiting or reducing the scope of testing and as i have a uh, reduced the scope so i will need fewer resources too so sampling is one of the tools that help in uh, provide cost effectiveness for the audit mission however this uh, the quality of the finding will of course rely on the sample that we selected we need to ensure that the sampling that we selected is uh, representing the fact or representing uh, as much uh, as it could from the real population so in sampling we has we have many type, types of sampling the first type of sampling is the, the statistical and statistical sampling is based on math it is known as objective sampling and it is non-judgmental way each unit has an equal chance for being selected that's why statistical sampling is using the law uh, uh, of uh, probability every element or every node in the population will have the same chance of being selected it help in minimizing the detection risk because it is objective so as we can quantify probability of errors we can use the statistical sampling to minimize the detection risk so whenever you are asked about what is the sampling methods that help in reducing the detection risk it will be the statistical sample and in other words it's it might be called objective or non-judgmental sampling for your info just for your info says statistical sampling has many variants one of these variants is what's called random sampling cell sampling fixed interval and that's all just for your knowledge because you are not expected to be master in sampling uh, topics however you need to understand when and what is what are the major areas or what are the major characteristics of different sampling techniques and when use every one of it so statistical sampling help in minimizing the detection risk it is based on math and has a lot of variants including random sampling cell and fixed interval we also has non-statistical sampling and non-statistical sampling is opposite of the statistical sampling. It is subjective, not objective, and it is also called judgmental sampling. Auditor experience decide the sampling in non-statistical way because as we said, it is subjective and based on judgment. So auditors select material sample or significant, significant sample that represent a higher risk. We have also another type of sampling which is called attribute sampling and attribute sampling is based on attribute selection either yes or no we select a sample that meet a specific criteria so we are selecting males who are under 21 do you are complying with this requirement yes or no yes you are part of the sample no you are not part of this sample and we select from this uh, uh, part a sample that we will conduct a test on it Test attribute present or missing, this is uh, the idea behind attribute sampling and it is expressed in percentage or rate of incident, how many. So in attribute sampling, we usually answer the question of how many. Attribute sampling is used in what is called the compliance testing and I believe we discussed compliance testing in control testing part. We also we also has have another type of sampling which is the variable sampling and the variable sampling contains extra information than attribute sampling we are not just describing yes or no we will have different or other attributes that can be used so it will not be attribute based on one attribute but it will be based on many attributes and we will understand that little bit later
It is expressed in measurement, not a percentage. So it can define how much, like I am asking about specific uh, type or a specific attribute, but I need to measure the existence of this attribute. So I need strong event. So how much does he does he uh, strong? This is what can variable sampling answer. It is used in substantive testing and remember substantive testing express in monetary value or express in money because we can count and it is used to calculate the weight of an entire subject by uh, prorating the small sample it is used to provide conclusion related to deviation from the norm and it has three types the first type is stratified mean in estimation and stratified sampling is a statistical model in which the population is divided into groups and samples are drawn from the various groups so we have a strata or have a sample that has men women uh, uh, young ladies old ladies young men old men and every one of them are a group and we select sample from each one of these groups and also we have the unstratified mean estimation and the unstratified mean estimation is uh, a sample mean is calculated and projected as an estimated total so we don't define a characteristics here and last one is the difference estimation and difference estimation used to estimate the total difference between audited values and book unaudited values based on difference obtains from sample observation so that's a lot about this part but however we need just to understand that variable sampling it is used during substantive testing it has three types stratified unstratified and different estimation and in stratified sampling the population is divided to groups and we select our sample from the group here is an example from uh, for stratified based sampling and as we can see here we have the uh, uh, the strata or the a stratified sample and we has uh, like uh, different ages and we select our samples from the different groups we have also uh, two additional sample methods the first one is stop or go and discovery sample and stop or go sample is a good sampling method we use the stop and go, or go uh, uh, sampling method when we are expecting few error rates so we believe that this control is strong so we will, we will choose small sample for instance i believe that the change management process for a certain organization is strong process so i will just select or will just say that i need four reports or four change management documents not more than four because i believe that the process is mature and the four uh, document will express or will uh, show me uh, a real evidence of compliance it is very important to uh, the auditor to independently select the sample this is important part to consider because if you uh, said to the auditee that you need only four reports this will make him uh, search for compliant for reports and will send it to you however you should be more accurate when selecting a sample by telling him that i need four reports one from each quarter or one from each month however what is the process or the period uh, that you are auditing to it so stop and go sampling is uh, stop or go sampling is used when you believe that the few errors are expected and when you believe in the internal control and it allow audit to end early while in discovery sampling we are actually use it in fraud investigation and we covers 100 percent of population so stop or go is when we believe that strong controls or a uh, few error rates while discovery sampling is covering 100 percent of the population and discovery sampling is used in case of fraud investigation sampling risk is a sample is not truly represent the population so that means that i selected a sample but this sample is not accurately reflect the real population and this is a big problem because the conclusion made from this sample will not be related to what is actually happening on the ground so here is a conclusion for how to select a sample we first determine the objective and then we define the population that we need the samples from it this population 
can be uh, processes, documents, uh, controls, and so on, or devices, computer devices that you need to be audited. And I will not be able to audit all computer devices, so I need to select assemble. Then uh, we will go to determining the method of sampling, whether it is uh, statistical, not statistics, not statistical, uh, uh, the variable sampling, or attribute sampling, or stop or go or discovery. Every one of these methods has its own use cases. And then we calculate the sample size by percentage. After then we select the sample and evaluating this sample against uh, the criteria or the control. And remember that sample will be set of systems that we will apply our, our control on it. In addition to all uh, last discussed parts, we need also to understand one uh, some of the key terms that need to be understood from the CISA exam perspective in relation to sampling. The first part or the first concept is the confidence coefficient. It can be also called the confidence level or confidence correlation. Confidence coefficient is related with the sample size. So for instance, when we say that sample size is 95% from the population, then the confidence coefficient will be 95 as well. So it is proportional with the sample size. So confidence coefficient, when it became 95%, when the sample represent represent 95% from the population. So the higher the confidence coefficient, the higher would be the sample size. Because if I am saying 95% from 100%, uh, so it's like 95 system out of 100. So in this case, confidence coefficient will be 100 as, as well. So when confidence uh, coefficient is high, then the sample size will hide. And when it is low, the sample size will low. So when do I select a small sample size? When I have confidence in the controls exist. So when I have confidence in the controls, I will select a small sample size, which would result to confidence or low level of confidence coefficient. While higher confidence coefficient is indicator of poor controls. When we when the expected error rate is high, the auditor needs need to select higher sample size. Level of risk is simply the uh, deduction or uh, uh, deducting confidence coefficient from 100%. So the level of risk will be the 5% if I am using confidence coefficient of 95%. We also have the key term precision, and precision means it represents the acceptable range difference between the sample and the actual population, and it is set in advance by the IS auditor. Tolerable error rate is the maximum error that can exist before impacting the audit result in a material way. It is acceptable to have a problem in sample, but this level of error should not exceed a certain level because once it exceeds this level, it will cause that the materiality will be impacted, the significance will be impacted, the sample will not truly represent the actual population. Sample mean, in another hand, is another term, and it is uh, represented by x bar. This sample, uh, the sample mean, is an average value found in sample. You can find also in the book another uh, terms that are related to sampling, but this is the most key uh, terms that you need to understand from the CISA exam perspective. I need to pay attention for the confidence coefficient part because confidence coefficient is relating to the strong or the poor of controls. When the controls are strong, then, then the sample will be small and sample size is proportional with the confidence coefficient. So this was all, was all for the sampling methodology part. I hope it was informative and see you in the next video.